Okay, that was absolutely obnoxious. So I was told in order to fit the, the sills right, uh, to get the reveal right and everything, you should mount the doors. So I went to mount the door, um, cause these things are notorious for having really bad like gaps in between the doors and so it's just uneven. So they say fit the door to get the reveal on the bottom of the door with the sill right. So I was like, okay, cool, do that. In order to get the door fitted right, you gotta fit the front fender or some people call it the front wing. So that whole process was absolutely ridiculous to get everything to fit right. I have never experienced something that was that big of a pain to get to line up right. So that probably took like five, six hours just to get this door and that front fender lined up and mounted properly. But now you can kind of see it. Hopefully you'll see it in the video. Um, we've got the door back on and the fender back on. You can look down it and you can check that uh that body line there and it's about as good as i can possibly get it so we're going with it and we're going to try to maintain this standard the reveal still is not perfect so you can see it's it's much uh wider there than at the bottom but it's as about as consistent as i can get and this gap is honestly kind of horrible up here but uh it it's it is what it is at this point. Like we're just gonna have to deal with that. Granted, these aren't gonna be different colors when it's all said and done. So hopefully it'll hide itself better. But in order to get this door to open properly, because unlike modern cars, it opens on the outside of the fender. Um, it's, it is what it is. So we finally got that taken care of. So now um, we're gonna leave this all just like it is and start thinking about how we wanna go about cutting this out. Actually, that's a lie. We're not going to leave this all together. We're going to take this front fender back off, but leave the door because we got to cut out the front, what's underneath the fender. So, um, after all that work, I'm just going to take it back off. But yeah, so I'm going to go through and identify all the, the spot welds that need to get cut in order to get this uh, membrane out and get it out. <laughs> So, blew through it completely, all three, I think there's three layers of sheet metal here. Blew through it completely, no hesitation, awesome. A Little bit better, and then a little bit better, but still not quite the results that I'm hoping for. So, I'm gonna go get a, uh, a spot weld cutter in the morning, and then we'll give these other ones a shot and see if we can make it a little better. Went and picked up some hole saw, or not hole saw. Well, I guess they are kind of like mini hole saws, but uh, spot welder cutters. Um, so we'll give that a shot and hopefully we'll be able to avoid this hole busting through here on every single one of these because I don't want a bunch of giant holes through the, uh, through the body. So uh, I'll set the camera up and get this going and see if it works out any better. So I've determined that I do not like the uh, spot weld cutter as much as the normal drill bit. At first when I used the drill bit, I just blew right through the sheet metal and put a big hole and didn't like that. Did that a few times with the spot welder as well. Um, now that I'm back over on this side, um, I went with the drill bit again and I don't know how well you can see, but I've kind of figured out how I like to do it. I'm sure there's a better way. First, uh, front end of the castle rail off. Um, this is what it looks like underneath. So obviously this will have to be replaced because that's bad um, and rusted out and crap. 
but, and same with right in here. But I think we're gonna be able to get away with cleaning this up in here and, and uh, just painting it and calling it good. So where we ended the other day is we got the uh, castle rail cut off and we got the membrane, the inner, uh, the yeah, sill membrane. This is the inner sill. Uh, so the membrane cut back um, to where the rocker panel is in the back. We gotta clean that up still and make it pretty and easy to weld to, but um, it's good for now. So today I think I'm gonna tackle getting this bit out. Um, and this. <laughs> cleaned up around uh, the hole. The lighting's pretty bad, so hopefully you can kind of see what this is. Um, got a little bit of the floor pan cut out, and that's what we're gonna replace first. We're gonna replace this, and then uh, we're gonna replace this part of the inner sill. That was right there. I'm kind of nervous because this is the first real welding on the car, and this is the first time I've replaced a piece of floor pan in any car. So we'll see how it goes. From my very, very limited experience and the research I've done, fitment is like, I don't know, 95% of the battle, maybe not that high, but 90% of the battle. If you can get a good piece of metal that'll fit in there nicely, then welding it and getting it to look pretty is relatively easy. So here's what looks like from underneath. So you can see there's definitely uh, some gaps. I didn't do the best job, but for a first attempt at ever doing this, I'm happy with it. I can fairly confident I'll be able to fill those in with a weld without making it too awful. And regardless, this is gonna get like an undercoating bed liner style thing on it anyway. So you're not gonna be able to really see it, but I'm still wanting to practice as if you can. So. Um, well, yeah, we'll get welded and see what we can get it to look like. I'm not sure at what point the battery died there, um, but it's probably okay because it's probably pretty boring uh, watching me just tack weld over and over again or stitch weld. So this is the view from the top after the first round of welding is done. Um, didn't warp at all, it's sitting in there good. It's a little tiny bit crooked, but you're never gonna know when it's all said and done, so I'm totally happy with it. Um, this is what the bottom looks like. So never claim to be the most proficient welder, but I think he got it good. Um, and it's solid all the way around. There might be a pinhole or two, or three or four or five, um, that we're gonna have to fix. But I'll start sanding this down um, probably tomorrow to make it a little bit prettier, and so it won't be as noticeable after the undercoating's put on there. All right, so we got this cleaned up as much as we're going to. Um, if I really want to, I could sand it down so it looked like a body panel. Um, I haven't found any pinholes yet, so I'm happy about that, but I'm not gonna sand it anymore because it's gonna get covered up by under or body liner or bed liner anyway. Um, so I don't really care if it is 100%. It's not gonna be a show car either way. Um, so we are going to move on to 
getting this whole patch. Okay, so another day in the garage. It's finally warm enough to open up the garage door and get some real light in here. It's like 45 degrees or something today, so it's kind of nice. It feels good. Um, but we are ready to weld in the next piece. So we got a little cut out um, and laid in there. So it fits nice and tight. There's a little bit of a gap. Uh, you can see right under here, but uh, it's good enough. I'll be able to bridge that with uh, some weld. And um, other than that, it fits pretty dang good. So I'm happy with it. So we'll uh, get this thing welded in. So there it is. Um, I could, if I wanted to, um, keep sanding that down, but I didn't find any pinholes and you're never gonna see this. It's gonna be covered. So no reason to make it super pretty, take the time to do it. So um, rather than the, run the risk of over sanding, I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Um, I don't see any pinholes. I'm honestly surprised, uh, but happy about it. So we're good. Um, so we can move on. We're at a mile, hit a milestone, freaking excited. I think I finally got everything cut out that needs to be cut out. So there's a big gap in here because the sill and the rocker panel both slide up in there to get welded, but I finally got everything cut out. I went a lot further than I was wanting to. Originally when I got the car, it was cut off to here. Um, I didn't want to leave this rust undone. And so I figured let's just do it and I had a little patch of uh, rust the fender right here so they just worked out to cut it all out at the same time and do it so that is cut out I can start cleaning this up so it's um, better to weld patch some of these holes um, and then get that front castle rail on and then start doing the membrane the outer rocker panel and then finish up with um, I went and bought a patch panel for the fender right here but um, yeah, so we're making progress. Um, freaking excited, so we'll keep pushing. So I've done a couple hours of work without filming it because it was pretty boring stuff, but I got this area cleaned up, uh, welded all these holes up just with a copper backer, so now I've got a good surface to weld to when I put the sill on. Did the same thing back here. Um, it's not very pretty, but it'll work. Today I'm gonna focus on getting this area cleaned up, ready for the uh, casserole I've got it cut out to size. Um, but I need to clean this up a little bit more and I'm going to prime it with that weld through primer. So um, hopefully it'll be a little more protected. So let's get to it. <laughs> welded to as well as fitting and cutting and refitting and making sure this whole assembly goes on nicely and then you know cleaning it up and uh, doing weld through primer on inside and outside just in case it'll get re sprayed eventually um, but so we're gonna do one last fit check make sure everything lines up how we want and then we'll take the outer sill off the rocker panel off um, weld the membrane in a few different places and put it all back up and then start plug welding every single one of these holes so it's gonna be quite the task, so I'm gonna do a time lapse to uh, speed it up a little bit, but then finally have one side done. I'm pretty excited about this, so let's get to it.
strong as we're going to right now it's not completely plug welded there's definitely still some holes that need to be filled um, but we are gonna wait till it's back up on the rotisserie so it's a lot easier and I'm not hunched over on the ground here um, it's plenty strong for what it what it is um, so we're gonna move on to this piece back here get this to fit up uh, get that welded in and then we can finally go to the other side how excited I am to be finishing one side. Obviously it's still not finished because it's still going to plug weld some of these holes, but that's going to happen when it's up back on the rotisserie because it's plenty strong how it is. So let's get this thing up in here and let's finish this sucker off. So I'm not gonna worry about this uh, edge back here because when I do these fender flares, uh, it's probably gonna get cut out somewhere in here anyway. So I'm just gonna do a couple plug welds here, uh, some tack welding there, and then uh, along here, and a couple plug welds on the bottom. done and I am freaking excited um, so this patch here isn't perfect the gap is not bad um, I worked it a little bit as I was welding it um, it's real thin over here um, but nothing some body filler and some more expertise that goes beyond mine can't fix so here it is in all its glory that still is finally done you can see the gap on the bottom of the door again isn't perfect but for first attempt at doing this stuff i'm happy that's it for this video part one of this sill replacement one side is done hopefully the next side will go a little bit quicker because i know what i'm doing so stay tuned for more thanks for watching